Hi everybody, I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame, a series that takes a fresh look at sports personalities who are remembered largely for their mistakes, controversial moments, or questionable decisions. Our mission is not to further vilify these individuals, but instead to challenge conventional wisdom and re-examine what has been accepted as fact. The crush of instant history makes it easier to scapegoat than to explain the complex dynamics of a complicated event. In this show, we'll take on the scorn still harbored by many a St. Louis Cardinals fan. We'll count down the reasons why you can't blame Don Denkinger for the Cards' loss to the Royals in the 1985 World Series. First, let's take a look at the evidence against the first base umpire. 1985, sixth game of the St. Louis, Kansas City series. In Kansas City, I'm working first base. The Cardinals are up three to two in games. And the Royals need one to tie and two to win. The Cardinals need three outs to win the World Series. Todd Worrell is now pitching for St. Louis. We got a one nothing win in the bag there. I don't think anyone had a problem with that because we played those kind of games all year long. George Orta will be batting for Motley. I remember us going out in the ninth and we were all saying, you know, the first outs are most important. A swimmer to the right side. Worrell races over to cover. I can see Orta making his last stride to the bag and the ball in Todd's glove and, you know, it was, it was such an obvious out. It was one of those plays where you didn't even need to see a replay. It looks like he's out. I don't think there's any doubt about it. And then when you saw the replay, it made it even worse. The Royals got a tremendous, gigantic break. I got myself in position where I got myself too close to play for the play that developed. I'm looking up. I see him catch it. I look down. I see his foot on the bag, and I called him safe. <laughs> you got to come up with something better than that. Clearly, from the number of replays that we saw here, George Orta was clearly out. There was no doubt about that. He said he beat the throw. He said he was on the bag, and he beat the throw. I said, well, he beat the throw. How the hell come he stepped on Worrell's foot? It's not bang, bang. It's He's a foot away. He's still in midair, you know? And Denkinger calls him safe, and everybody's looking like, what? I can remember looking into the stands, and Peter Ubroff is sitting right there with his whole entourage. And I mean, there was a look of disbelief on everyone's face. Percentage-wise in the game, if the first leadoff guy gets on base, the chances of a storm go up drastically. Oh, base hit into left field. Florida stops at second. We didn't think that that turn call would be the biggest point, but it was sort of like a, a momentum swing. The game is over, and as I approached the front door of the umpire's room, Peter Ubroff, the commissioner, was standing there, and I said to Peter, I said, uh, did I get the play right? And he said, no. While the Cardinals fumed, the Royals capitalized on their good fortune by crushing their cross-state rivals 11-0 in the deciding game. The Royals have won the 1985 World Series. Immediately upon the Royals' victory, Don Denkinger became head GOAT in the St. Louis Hall of Shame. Although other missed calls have been made in World Series history, none is remembered with quite the clarity or quite the bitterness. If you're going to ask me to name one call in my time covering baseball that I look back on as life-altering, season-altering, postseason-altering, and was dead wrong, that was the call. It was raining for a while in St. Louis this morning. Someone suggested all that water was tears. Cardinal fans look at game six as the night the series should have been won. They do blame Don Denkinger. I mean, that will never change here in St. Louis. The city blamed him. I mean, uh, the fans, you know, 
let him know how much he was hated. Two disc jockeys in St. Louis got my telephone number and my address, and they put it out over the air. I pulled in, and there was a police car sitting there. They had numerous calls, and they were threatened that they were going to burn the house down. It made his life miserable for, uh, for a long while. I had a ton of letters that were sent to me from St. Louis fans. Only about two or three of them really stood out in my mind that there's something wrong. This guy's sick. He said, I know where you go. I know what you do. And if I plant my 357 Magnum pointed at you, uh, it'll blow you away. You saw the backlash against umpire Don Denkinger, which in parts of Missouri has lasted to this day. This show will count down the top five reasons you can't blame Denkinger for the Cardinals losing the 1985 World Series. But there are other reasons as well. We call them the best of the rest. The need for instant replay. Among the brickbats and diatribes leveled at Denkinger, at least one constructive idea was raised. Everybody talked about instant replay, and that was the battle cry for why there should be instant replay in baseball. In retrospective, if by some chance they had instant replay way back in 1985, you know, Don would be out of the hole. Another best of the rest. Had the league championship series not been expanded from five games to seven in 1985, Denkinger would never have had to make the worst call of his career. That was the first year that it was best of seven. The Blue Jays did take three of the first four games. Uh, so Toronto might have gone to the World Series. We were down two to nothing to Toronto, three to one to Toronto, came back and won the last three games. That series definitely would have been over if it had not been uh, changed to best of seven. The killer tarp. A freak accident before game four of the NL playoffs sidelined Cardinals running sensation Vince Coleman for the rest of the postseason. That night it started raining, so we kind of raised uh, the tarp lift up and uh, we start going out with it and the players were coming on the infield. They had an automatic tarp on, so it was it raised up out of the ground about, you know, three feet or so, and then ran from behind home plate all the way beyond first base. Terry Pendleton and I were just standing there talking, doing nothing else. That tarp comes up out of the ground, and you had your back to it. You cannot hear it, and once it started rolling, if it hadn't gotten me, it would have gotten Terry. If it hadn't been for seven players holding it until they could get it shut off, the thing would have crushed him. They carry Coleman off, the teammates of Vince Coleman. And a couple of days later, we went in to um, take an MRI and found out that it had a cracked tibia. I heard some of the players, you know, kind of say, you know, there goes our chance. Arriving from the minors nine days into the card season, Coleman hit the big leagues in full stride and didn't slow down for the rest of the year. He turned the league on its ear, basically is what he did. I mean, he made catches into blithering idiots behind the plate. Stealing 110 bases and scoring 107 runs, Coleman ran away from the competition for Rookie of the Year. Catchers couldn't get him out, but the monster tarp could. What irony. The fastest man in the National League, swallowed up by a tarp moving two and a half miles an hour. It's the greatest postseason injury ever. Uh, Vince Coleman being eaten by the tarp machine. We didn't feel the impact of that immediately. I think where we felt it was, uh, you know, regrouping and then going uh, to the, the World Series against Kansas City. I blame myself for being in the way of that tarp. I tell Brett Saberhagen he wouldn't have a World Series ring if I was in there. Before getting to reason number four, we pause to consider the merits of a question raised by some St. Louis fans. Is it possible that former co-MVP Keith Hernandez put a curse on his former team? He had won the MVP in 79. He was a big part of their 82 championship team. And they trade him for Neil Allen, who was an absolute bust. The night that Keith Hernandez came to New York, he was distraught. I became very angry, and 
I started reading books of the occult and black magic, and I learned some, some spells. An electric tarp comes out of nowhere and runs over Vince Coleman, your spark plug, your leadoff man. He stole over 100 bases that year. I blame Keith Hernandez. I didn't realize how strong my powers were. I had no intention of hurting him like that. World Series 85, losing seven games. World Series 87, losing seven games. World Series 2004, maybe the most embarrassing display in the history of a World Series. And that is the worst base running of all time. Jeff Supan with the base running blunder. I looked at the number that was on the back of his jersey, number 37, ringing some bells, Keith Hernandez. The curse comes back. Now for reason number four, a doubleheader. Tommy Lasorda and Tom Needenfuhr. Their decisions in games five and six enabled the Cards to win the NLCS. If it wasn't for Tom Needenfuhr, the Cardinals wouldn't be in there. Obviously, they would not have won game six. They would not have won game five. Game five, ninth inning. Cardinals and Dodgers tied at two. Tom Needenfuhr facing switch hitter Ozzie Smith, who hadn't homered left-handed in 3,009 at bats. Smith corks one into right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. Ozzie hadn't hit a home run left-handed in, I don't know, since God made dirt or something. And the Cardinals have won the game by the score of three to two on a home run by the Wizard. With two on and two out in the ninth inning of game six, St. Louis trailed 5-4 with cleanup hitter Jack Clark at the plate. And how do you like this situation? The tying and possible winning runs are in scoring position with two out and Jack Clark coming up. I remember the meeting that we had before the first game. One of the key things that came out of there was Jack Clark is the only guy in the late innings who is a home run threat. I'm saying pitch to Jack Clark, please give him a shot. I was warming up in the bullpen, and Needham Fuhrer was in there. I said, he's got to walk Clark here because he said in the meeting that we're going to pitch around him. Tom Lasorda reiterated to Tom Needham Fuhrer, you cannot throw a fastball of any kind, 105 miles an hour, by Jack Clark. He's not going to walk him. It is Jack Clark and Tom Needham Fuhrer going head to head. Everyone just all of a sudden glanced at each other in the dugout and go, can you believe this? One to deep left field, and that one is gone. And Lasorda got the answer to his rhetorical question. Something about should I walk this guy and pitch to that so-and-so. To this day, I never understood why Tom Lasorda didn't walk Jack Clark. And Andy Van Slyke and myself were behind him, and I think combined we probably had five hits in the whole series. The Cards' pathetic offense. With a regular season batting average of a league-leading 264, St. Louis hit 185 against the Royals. Ozzy didn't hit, Willie didn't hit, Tommy didn't hit, no one hit during the World Series. We weren't hitting the ball. I mean, we were. We scratched out some runs and managed to win some ball games. but you hit like that, usually you don't even have the opportunity to see game seven. With Vince Coleman out of the lineup, center fielder Willie McGee batted nearly 100 points below his regular season average of 353. Even though he was a batting champion MVP, he did not like leading off, was not used to it. He didn't do a very good job leading off. 2-2, got him swinging. And it's strike three. In seven games against the Royals, the Cards scored just 13 times. I didn't drive in a run the whole series after after having 110 during this, the whole season, but there weren't a whole lot of guys to drive in that series. Down goes Landry. Their pitching has just been superlative this whole series. Well, I don't know whether so much their pitching as just our lack of hitting. They pretty much shut down our whole lineup. The pitch is strike three, the throw to third is a double play. We should have taken care of business and done more. That's all. We should have put some more points on the board. That brings us to reason number two. The Cardinals collapse in the field after Denkinger gave the Royals a leadoff base runner in the ninth. He pops it up in foul ground and 
Clark comes over to the dugout with Porter, and Clark doesn't know where he is. And Daryl Porter was calling it all the way. He's calling, he's calling it, and then all of a sudden, he goes, I don't have it, and the ball is behind me. Don Deckinger's call was the first out of the inning. You can regroup and get the three outs. Jack Clark dropped the pop-up. Um, I don't think I would have dropped it. We all look like we don't know what we're doing now, and all of a sudden, boom, base hit. Now you got first and second. Ground ball, base hit, left field. All in a second and holding. After a Royals failed sacrifice bunt got the cards and out at third, catcher Darryl Porter's mixed signal to Todd Worrell cost them dearly. The key play of the whole series came with Hal McRae batting against Todd Worrell. Darryl had a sign that if you went to his mask, you know, we were gonna we were gonna go back to the first sign or, you know, switch it back. Darryl, I'm sure, catching was sweating and stuff, but he reached through his mask to push his glasses up on his face. And what appeared to me, you know, going to his mask that we were gonna switch or went from a fastball to a slider. That gets away from corner and the runners move up. The runners go to second and third. And Whitey Herzog was then forced to walk McRae, which he didn't want to do, to load the bases for a possible double play. I think that series came down to not catching the pop-up, making the bad pitch, and then letting Dane Orch, an extra guy, beat you. A little looping fly ball, base hit. One run is in. They still got a crack at the play at the plate. Van Slyke charges and throws. Porter might have done a better job blocking the plate. Rest his soul, but Porter could have caught the pop-up. He might have been able to prevent the pass ball, and he might have been able to block the plate. And you can see that someone was smiling down on the Kansas City Royals here tonight. Game six was still the Cardinals for the taking after Denkinger's call. The Cards nervous breakdown. They began obsessing over Denkinger's bad call after game six, and carried it onto the field in game seven. The Cardinals walked off the field, convinced that the call had cost them that win, and I think convinced that they had no chance to win in game seven. I thought the guy was out at first base. Once again, it doesn't seem like we're getting too many calls either. I don't like to get on the umpires, but Jesus, you think once in a while that we would get one. I'm pretty perturbed about that call. When brilliant managers become unstrung by something that drives them crazy, Whitey Herzog by the Don Denkinger call in the World Series, and the players respond to that by quitting. Balboni is going, and the pitch is again drilled to left field, hooking down the line, and gone! As it turns out in game seven, I, I don't get the job done, and, and neither does anybody else. Four walks, and to the bullpen they go. After giving up five earned runs in two plus innings, Cards ace John Tudor cut his hand during an emotional outburst in the dugout. That's grounded into left field for a base hit. Up comes Landry with the throw, too late, and it's five to nothing. As that game wore on and they realized we're not going to win the World Series, the rest of it was more about venting than it was about winning. That's Wadi Herzog screaming at Don Dickinger. You got Don Dickinger behind the plate. I mean, that's like putting a stick of dynamite back there and someone lighting it. Down 9 nothing in the fifth inning, Whitey Herzog dispatched his most volatile thrower, Joaquin Andahar, to the mound. I looked out to the bullpen, and I saw Andahar warming up. I thought, oh, boy, this is Whitey's way of getting even here with Dickinger. And it's inside ball four. Whitey come running out of the dugout, and Whitey said, where are you going? I said, I'm going out to stop him. I said, if he raises his hands again, he's gone. He said, Don, if you got to play right last night, we wouldn't have had to be here tonight. Whitey's gone. You can see that coming. Should Whitey have brought Andohar in the game? Probably not. I mean, that, that was asking for trouble. And Andohar's thrown out of the game, and they better get him out of there. They better get him out in a hurry. Following the humiliating 11 0 blowout, Cardinal players unleashed their fury on various inanimate objects in the clubhouse. Ah, the bat that Joaquin Andujar used to destroy a restroom underneath Royals Stadium. Look at this. Maybe this bat represents the frustration of a team picked to win the World Series and devastated in Game 7. It was one of the most embarrassing moments in Cardinal history, how that club behaved. And the Cardinals are venting their wrath. They are so angry. 
It was a nervous breakdown. Once Dinkinger missed the call with no outs in the top of the ninth of the previous game, the Cardinals went into a nervous breakdown that didn't end until it was 11 to nothing in the seventh game. With as many decisions as they make in a game, we could do a whole show blaming the loss of many championship series on an umpire or official. We chose to concentrate on one. Did we change your mind? Maybe, maybe not. Hopefully we made you think about it in a different light. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching. I thought his name was Don Denkinger, which was like another way for St. Louisans to take a shot at you. Like, we're not even going to learn the proper pronunciation of your last name. We're going to call you Denkinger. Denkinger, like... You're not even a girl, you're a jerk. You're a soft G. Your you're, you're soft G ruined our lives.